Today I want to talk to you about a flight controller, but not just any flight controller. It's a pretty awesome flight controller from Beta FPV. Mm. Hold on. Oh, it, it's texting me right now. You up? Yeah, recording a video. Sorry about that. The flight controllers, crazy things. Anyway, it's a very special flight controller from Beta FPV. It has some really awesome features that made me want to purchase it. Mm. What's texting me? I'm spinning. Yeah, your flight controller. Are why are you yelling at me? I don't know why it's screaming. Anyway, back on to what I was talking about before it interrupted us. This flight controller, it has a lot of really awesome features that made me want to buy it and try it. Even though it's beta FPV, I gave it a shot. Mm. I'm not yelling. Yes, you are. You're using all caps. Sorry, I, I apologize. Normally it doesn't text me this much. It's just got a mind of its own lately, I guess. Anyway, back to the flight controller that we're talking about. It's pretty awesome. It has a really cool feature set. It has a full Express LRS mm. receiver built in. Texting me again. So dizzy. Of course you are. Stop yelling. Anyway. I'm going to get through this at some point, I promise. It'll stop texting me. It, it'll stop texting me. Uh, mm. My gyro hurts. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and we really are going to talk about a flight controller today. It is the flight controller that I put in this build. This is the 65mm HD0 Digital Snowflake Quad. And a cool person on my Discord named ZMasta cut this frame for me, and I've been testing it out quite a bit lately. But before I could test it out, I had to pick a, pick a, pick a bunch of components. I had to, I had to pick some. And one of the things I picked was the Beta FPV 1S F4 5 Amp ELRS AIO. And that's a mouthful of wordy things about FPV but it's what I picked for some reasons. The primary reason is that when we talk about small flight controllers, we normally get into talking about Express LRS via SPI. And if you don't know what the difference between an SPI-based Express LRS receiver is and the ones we use on all of our big quads, like the ones on my wall there that are UART-based, it's really just the way that it connects to the MCU or the main processor on the flight controller. SPI-based receivers require the ELRS code to be built into beta flight where UARTs don't. I can flash this with whatever I want whenever I want. If ELRS decides to come out with version 3.1 tomorrow, I can flash it to this board and not have to worry about updating beta flight, which has been a big pain for me with my other micros that I have that you can't see because they're all the way up on the top of the wall. Having to keep up with beta flight updates in order to get Express LR up updates has mean, meant in the past that I've had multiple modules. Like I've had a module on Express LRS 3 and Express LRS 2.5.1 just so I could fly my older quads. And I had to pop that module in to fly the quads that I couldn't update to Beta Flight 4.4 when it didn't exist yet. Even though the rest of my fleet was running ELRS 3.0 because it came out way before Beta Flight 4.4 did, which included the SPI base code for ELRS 3.0. And that is a big draw of this flight controller. This 1S flight controller is packing an F411 processor, a BMI270 gyro, and it packs all that into a 26 by 26 normal whoop mounting pattern. It's made for whoops. But it also has a lot of other things. It has an 8 meg black box, it has a full OSD chip, it has a broken out UART, a 5 volt rail, all the things you'd expect, plus that UART based ELRS receiver, which is really, really cool. Now, I will say one thing about this that kind of gets me, and you can't see it sticking out the back here, is the one wire antenna. Because there's not enough room for a UFL connector, we can't put the normal mini immortal T antenna that we put on our ELRS receivers. So this one uses a one wire. It's a hit or miss, you know, it's fine. But all of that combined with the board's ability to keep up with a five amp output for little bitty motors is pretty darn good. And the fact that it comes with a BT 2.0 cable soldered directly to it from the factory. And you can get this in two form factors. You can get this in a form factor that has motor plugs already soldered on, which weighs a little bit more. But the version that I got had no motor plugs, which weighs right under three grams. So it is pretty darn light too. And it all comes in for around 40 bucks which is pretty affordable. But 
It's hiding a deep, deep, deep dark secret. And that dark secret is it's made by Beta FPV, which I was willing to overlook at first. I picked it. I picked it. And before you ask, no, Beta FPV did not send this to me. Patrons paid for this. All of the lovely patrons on my Patreon, the patrons on my Patreon, all the people whose names are flashing up here and over there, they paid for this. And my channel members on YouTube, they helped me pay for this too. And I thought, eh, I'm gonna give Beta FPV a shot at this. This is a pretty cool build. I wanna get a nice flight controller and put in it. And I wanna have full function of ELRS while I do it. And yeah, Beta FPV got me. I got Beta FPV'd. I got Beta FPV'd pretty bad. I didn't just get Beta FPV'd once. One flight controller, ma ha ha. I got it twice. Two flight controllers, ma ha ha. I got it three times. Three flight controllers, ma ha freaking ha. I went through three flight controllers. They all had the same problem within a couple of flights of each other. And that problem is this. It's the gyro literally screaming at me at the top of its lungs. Because that spectrograph right there was the gyro output. Now that's the raw gyro scaled output that I got from the logs. And the flights, they represent that pretty, pretty badly. I tuned it as well as I could for as crazy as those logs are, and I took it out for a flight. And before you get all upset at Bacon Ninja for like not going through the whole process and saying, well, Bacon, you clearly damaged your flight controller during installation. Uh, no, I, I didn't. And you know how I know it's not frame resonance or damage? Because it did it on all three boards that I got. And the reason I know it's not damage, because it wouldn't even arm. When the quad says I'm not gonna arm because the gyro is so noisy that it cannot calibrate, and you have to go into beta flight and adjust this setting so that you can calibrate it, you have to crank it way up just to get the quad to arm. That means that the gyro is just sitting there doing nothing and screaming at the top of its lungs. And not only did it do nothing, when I plugged it in, it made this noise. That sounds healthy, doesn't it? No, the answer is no. No, it does not sound healthy. But regardless, I took it outside and I flew it. And just to show you what things were like so you know what the baubles are coming from, I used this. This is an anemonometer, an anemonometer, an Ammonometer, whatever it does, it measures wind speed. And this is from a company called Top Tees, and they did send me this for free to play with a couple of months ago. And I finally got out with it, and uh, yeah, this is just on to show you what the wind speed was like during the flight, because with small quads like this, the wind can affect a lot of things, and gyro noise and tuning and all of that affect a lot of things. And the graph that I showed you was actually an inside flight, so that didn't have anything to do with wind, but as you watch this flight footage of this board in action with these T-Motor 0802 motors and the HD0 VRX, VTX, whatever thing that is, just remember that I am measuring wind speed and at the end I will show you the wind speed to show you that it's not the wind causing the problem. All right, so it's noisy, but let's just send it, see what it should do. The bubbles are getting me, but I got an inverted yaw spin in there. The bubbles are real terrible. I mean, other than the the actual roll or pitch yaw, pitch bobble, because it's not even really a roll a roll bobble, it's more just pitch only. It flies really well if it would just get that bobble out. But this beta FPV board, single-handedly, the noisiest thing I've ever seen. And when I put my foot in it, oh man, it just it just falls over and dies. Ah! We live, we live through that crash. Like I said, it falls over and dies. But then it comes back to life somehow. Let's just do some low cruising. We'll do some low altitudes here. And it goes where you put it, it just doesn't want to go where you put it. 
which is pretty disappointing for a board that has a full-size ELRS receiver and a lot of potential. And no matter what I do, I cannot get this noise out of there. Oh, oh, that's it. I didn't have enough battery. No juice left. Well, let's go see what the anemometer says. Let me go get that quad, and we'll see what the anemometer says about what the wind was doing. Okay, so I don't know if you can see the anemometer screen, but it says 8.94 miles an hour. So, relatively mild wind, so I know the bobbles aren't coming from the wind, and I know the, the noise isn't coming from the wind. And I think, yep, we can get the real time and the average on here too. The average is at 0.15 miles an hour, so the gusts were up to 8. Uh, yeah, so definitely not a problem. Good use of an anemometer. Especially when you're tuning, just to see what the wind is actually doing to you. And there you go. Pretty mild wind that day. And I flew a decent pack for what I could out of this thing while it was literally screaming at me at the top of its lungs like a crazed lunatic in the back alley holding a bottle of booze. I don't know what it's doing, but it has some problems and it probably needs some counseling. And if you want an anemometer of your own, there is a link in the description below to Amazon where you can pick this one up. It's actually pretty nice. It measures temperature, wind speed, holds max and min, and gives you averages. It does all kinds of things. It's Celsius for the people who aren't in the United States, you know, uh, Fahrenheit. But anyway, it's also relatively cheap. Thanks, Top Tees, for sending that to me. So that I could start proving things about my wind speeds while I'm out flying. And if you want to do that, especially with your tiny whoops, eh, go pick one up. But I'm done plugging that product for a minute so that uh, we can continue on talking about the tragedy that is this beta flight or beta FPV board with beta flight on it because it is a tragedy. Now you'll probably say, well, Bacon, there could be a bunch of things going on. Yeah, it's noisy before you arm the motor, so you know it's not the frame. And yeah, we know it's really noisy and it wasn't the wind. But what else could it be, Bacon? What else could it be? It could be the VTX on top, throwing some noise, some RF interference, and messing with the gyro. So I desoldered that, and I tested it again. And this is what the Spectre F looked like, which is identical to the first one. Basically identical. I mean, within a little bit, basically identical. And that's just literally hovering in my living room. I was just hovering the quad in my living room. I trimmed the first 10 seconds off the flight. I trimmed the last 10 seconds off the flight where I'm taking off and landing. That is literally just at a hover. It's screaming at me. So I got another board and I flew it and it flew really well for one flight, which HD0 didn't record because if you didn't know, there's been a bug with SD cards lately in the goggles. So it didn't record it. Uh, but it flew good for one flight, and then it went straight back to doing this again, and I had to set the stupid gyro threshold and all that before it would arm, and it kept having problems. So I thought, hey, what else could it be, Bacon? What else could it be? If it's not the VTX, and it's not any of these other things, it's not the frame, what else could it be? Maybe it's capacitance. So I got myself a big pack of 10 volt, 450 microfarad capacitors, and I threw one of those right on the mains. And... This is what that spectrograph looked like. Suspiciously the same. So I got a third one. Yeah, that makes three. I got a whole triple set of these suckers. And within two flights, they all did the exact same thing. So would I recommend this Beta FPV 1S ELRS 5 amp AIO to you? No, no, I would not. Beta FPV, it is a great try. This is an awesome idea. However, the implementation seems to be just really terrible. It's got to be a quality control problem with the batch that I got them out of. I ordered my first one from Pyrodrone, my second one from Race Day Quads, and my third one from Pyrodrone again. And I got the same results out of all three of them, really. Now, the first one was completely dead on arrival, and I did speak with Beta FPV about it, and they told me it clearly looks like a hardware problem, and then I'd have to get with the person I bought it from to get a replacement which I did, and that's how I got the third one from Pyrodrone. But, yeah, I mean, come on, three of them, three of them, in the course of two months, three of these things 
have totally crapped on me. And it's not the BMI 270 gyro unless they're using some kind of knockoff. I suspect it is something internal on the 3.3 volt rail with a capacitor. There's probably a cap in there that is just not making good connection or is dead. And they got a bad run of capacitors when they made some of these things. So if you wanna pick one of these up, do it with some caution. It's a great board other than the fact that mine just decides to yell at me, all three of them within a couple of flights. I hope that doesn't happen to you. But if I'm going to give you a recommendation, I'd say just skip this one. Just skip it right over. You don't want none of this. You don't want to have your gyro screaming at you. But the rest of the board is really great. If you can get past the, you know, main important thing that you're supposed to use to make the quad fly, if you get past that, it has 5 amp ESCs, which held up really well with the 0802 22,000 kV motors that I have and the Jim Fan 32 millimeter props that I have on it. It held up really well. I didn't have any problems with the ESC at all. I didn't have any range problems out of the LRS receiver, even with the one wire antenna. It was pretty easy to install. I did get the version that I had to solder, 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 if you're not American, soldering. I had to solder the motor pads on or the motor wires onto the pads. I opted to cut the plugs off to save some weight because this thing is a chonky thing. It's 30 grams all up. I didn't expect it to fly great, but I didn't expect it to fly that badly. It was, it was really, really bad. It was really bad. So save your 40 bucks and go buy something else. Maybe get a happy model board. That's where I'm going to go with the next version of this quad. It's going to get a happy model board, which I've had my fair share of happy model breakages before, but they've been my fault, not, not the manufacturer's fault. And I hope that in the future, Beta FPV does better quality control, even though we know historically that's probably not going to happen. I'm going to hold out some hope. Maybe they will, because this board is actually really, really cool other than that. If you can get past the one UART that it has available, the one five volt pad that it has available, the one wire ELRS receiver, everything else about it is really, really good and it is very, very lightweight. Just don't buy it right now because I, yeah, I think that you're probably gonna have the same problem I have. And if you don't, and if you are running it, let me know in the comments below if you've ever had a problem with yours like this or your other experiences with beta FPV gear because I hear a lot of things. It's good if you wanna spend less money and can handle getting three or four of them before you get something that works. That tends to be the way it is. Anyway, that's all I've got for you. Thanks patrons for allowing me to test this thing even if it did scream at me the entire time. I enjoyed messing with it and I'm gonna to continue to screw with them anyway just because eh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just an optimist. I'm hoping beta FPV gets better even though everything about anything I've ever seen tells me they won't. I'm gonna keep holding out that little bit of hope. And thank you channel members for being part of it as well because that's a new thing. If you didn't know, the channel memberships are on on the channel. This channel doesn't receive any money from advertising or anything else other than you as a community. And that's the only thing that keeps literally these lights going so you can see my ugly face. And the fact that I cut my hair. If you've been watching the videos, you, you notice I probably cut my hair. I'm a lot less shaggy than I have been. But anyway, until next time, Stay greasy, don't buy this board, and I'll catch you later. Now he's got a Texas flight controller back. We're through, I'm breaking up with you. It's not you, it's me. Nope, 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 nope. It is you, not me. Yeah, that, that one. Don't, please don't, don't do this to yourself. Just don't, I did it so you don't have to. Just, just don't, yeah.